Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. Um, so I'm going to go over for just a few minutes the last three sections of what you would be teaching in preschool that we haven't talked about yet. So the first one is art. And when we talk about art in preschool, there's a lot of benefit that art has in, with children. It's not just um, fun and you know they enjoy it and it's something they like to do, but they also learn a lot from it. Children can express a lot more about their feelings and their emotions in art than they can in verbal language. And they also can express their creativity, individuality, and um, they're also able to develop those fine motor skills that we've been talking about. So I'm gonna show you when you sign up to teach art, you should do something creative and fun. There should never be a coloring page for art or something just really basic like that. Make it something exciting and fun for them. Art always needs to revolve around the theme for the day. That's the one big requirement for art is that it's theme related. So a couple of things, examples of it. And remember for the assignment today, you're gonna to be submitting some examples. If you look down on the Canvas assignment underneath this, you'll see that you need to take some notes on this video and write down at least two things I show in each of the sections. So write down two art things that I show. So this one, this was an ice skate they made one time. And again, to make it as fun and creative as you can. So you can see there they used a, the dot bingo markers to color it in or to paint it. We tied a ribbon on there like a shoelace. And they even put some tin foil on the, the blade so it looked a little more realistic. So the more um, fun you can make it and using different supplies and things like that, the better. This was another one that we used. So when we were talking about zero is a hero is a theme that we did at the beginning of the year. So they made this Ninja Turtle um, hero that they were able to paint and then put together the pieces. So puppets and things like that are fun. Kids love to do big or three dimensional type of things. This is a really big one. So they were able to decorate this as themselves. So we had these already cut out. We had different hairstyles they could choose, um, different things like that. And then they glued that on and they tried to color on the color of clothes that they were wearing. So big things are fun. This one we made around um, like a autumn theme. And so they made this scarecrow out of a paper sack just stuffed with some newspaper. And when you do your lesson plan, you would have all of these pieces cut out for the kids to be able to do their own. So you'd have a bunch of yellow strips, the hats cut out, all the stuff that they could just put them together, color stuff and put it together, whatever they needed to do, using paint and stuff like that. Here's another example. So this one, talking about how to make it a little more interesting, instead of just making a reindeer, they traced their hands on construction paper. The teachers would help them do that and cut them out for the antlers. And then the nose is using some glitter paint or glitter glue to color that instead of just using crayons for everything. So you can see there was some crayons, but then there was the glitter paint and tracing their hands. So use as many different elements as you can and make it fun and interesting like I keep saying. They love to do things with their handprints. That one they made a lamb out of their handprint with paint. This one would be, um, there's like a little aquarium fish tank that they made. So it has two paper plates, one with the center cut out. Then this is just some lamination film that they put on there. So they would use the first part of the plate, decorate it, and then add the um, second part on there and, and decorate that too. This is one, uh, like I say, art has to be about the theme. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. This day was, we were talking about helping hands or um, serving others, manners, that kind of thing. And that could be a little bit um, strange to think of an art project for that. So this is what we made for this one. They made themselves and there's their arms and hands. They decorated it to look like themselves. And then the words say, my hands can help others buy. And they told us some things they were gonna do to help their moms or dads or people at home. And we wrote that on there. This is a Abraham Lincoln um, mask and it has some elastic um, on there that they can use to wear it. This was one we used glue and then sprinkled some glitter on it. You can use glitter, but you have to clean up whatever your area is. So just to keep in mind, glitter is pretty messy, but that would be an activity that they did around Halloween. They made a spider web just by swirling around the glue, putting some glitter on and then putting a spider on there. 
kind of another example of how that turned out. This one, again, kind of three-dimensional or movable things are fun. They folded the legs like accordions. There's metal fasteners that make it so you can move the head and the arms and things like that for St. Patrick's Day. Um, let's see, this is another example of how you can make it just a little um, step up from normal. This one, they talked about the beach and stuff like that. So they colored their sand pail, but they also glued some sand onto the sand pail to make it a little more interesting. So I think that gives you a good idea for art. Art just needs to be about the theme and creative and fun. It should be one of the kids' favorite activities that they go to. And just, again, using as many different um, mediums or elements that in the um, project will make it more interesting and fun as well. Okay, so now we're gonna shift gears. Let me just pack this back up so it's not noisy while I'm talking. All right, so that was art. Another one that we haven't talked about yet is creative movement. Creative movement is going to be, art is one of the rotations. I forgot to say that when we do the table rotations. Um, creative movement is going to be when um, it's after snack time and they have snacks and then books and puzzles and then they have creative movement. The whole idea of creative movement is we want the kids to be up and moving and doing something physical. So it helps those gross motor skills develop um, and it also helps them to kind of get their wiggles out before they go to the rotations. So creative movement is about the beginning of the second part of the second period of your class, second part of preschool. And so they've been already sitting and listening and things for a while. We want to give them a chance to kind of get their wiggles out. You have to plan something that we can do indoors. Sometimes the weather's good enough and we can take them out on the playground for part of creative movement but you always still plan an indoor activity that would be fun and creative again to do with them in case we can't go outside or for part of the time we'll still do your activity even if they go outside. Um, but it needs to be something they're all up and moving. It should not be something they sit down at the table and make something. Uh, for example, so this would be an example with creative movement. Um, so one time, this is something the teachers made for the kids, little bell shakers. So they would not make this themselves. The teachers would make these ahead of time. You would have one to give each of the kids. And then you would do some kind of activity that takes about 10 minutes with your um, little shaker that you made. So you're not just going to give this to them and say, dance around and play with them. That's not going to last for 10 minutes. That's like 30 seconds. So you'd have a little bit more planned and you might say okay let's shake them up high and then you have them shake them up high shake them down low um, turn around in a circle so you can do different actions with it and it takes just a little bit more time if you have them written on some little pieces of paper you can have them draw and draw them out of a little basket or a fun thing different objects you can use to use as canisters like this cookie jar would be fun to use as some type of an activity maybe we're playing or maybe we're learning about letter C that day, you could put some little cookie-shaped papers in here, pull them out and have them say a different thing to do for that object. Um, I'm gonna pause this for one sec. Some more ideas of things you can do with the kids. I mentioned having them do different activities. We have these big dice that are fun to use in things like creative movement. So these are some already pre-made types of things like this one says, to um, reach high. This one says stomp your foot. So we would let the kids roll the dice and then we would see what they were supposed to do. Sometimes we could play music for 30 seconds, have the kids kind of go around the rug doing whatever action they rolled and then pause the music and then they freeze and we pick another one. So that's where you could use these little containers and things like that to pick things out of a jar or a container to um, do the next activity or it could be like rolling the dice and you can make your own cards and put them in there for that. Another way to do the same type of a thing, these again are purchased cards. You can make your own cute things. So this one is doing arm circles. And so they would, if they picked out, I would usually have a stack of cards like this and I would pick a child to come choose one. If they picked this one, jump in place, 
then they would jump. Sometimes I'll have them roll another dice with just numbers on it. And if it says jump in place, then somebody rolls the dice and it says three, they jump three times. So those would be some things they could do for um, the creative movement. And then other ideas, this is something we made one time, just stapled popsicle sticks on a paper plate and we blew up balloons and they had to bounce them back and forth to each other. This was a streamer that they made out of crepe paper. The, the um, teachers made them and then gave them to the kids to use for creative movement. And they would use that. You could use music with it. So these could go along with row, row, row your boat. Give the, each of the kids an oar and have them row their boats. Again, that's not going to take the whole 10 minutes. So you would want to have a few different types of songs or things like that that you could do with it. So creative movement, again, physical movement, physical activities. You can do things like we have a parachute that you can use and you'd have to plan some different um, things for them to do with it. Again, to have your planning time for the day we do lesson plans. You could use, um, like do something like musical chairs. There's all kinds of things you could do with the kids. Simon Says could work, but they usually don't understand that sometimes you didn't say Simon Says, but you could have them do things like that. Just remember 10 minutes is kind of a long time. So you've got to keep that in mind and be able to keep them busy and interested for 10 minutes. So that is creative movement. At the end of creative movement, you're gonna excuse them to go to the tables for to start their rotations. So we, when we do this, we want the kids to um, be told which table to go to, but make it a little bit fun. So we do what's called a transition. And a transition is another thing that you're gonna write a couple of ideas down that we could do. But with a transition, um, you're just going to find a really fast, quick way that would be fun for the kids to be able to be excused to tables instead of just saying, okay, Caden, you go to this table. Noah, you go to this table. We want to do something just a little more interesting. So this is one thing I've used before are some little homemade binoculars. So I'll put them on and I'll say, all right, you guys, I'm going to use my binoculars and I'm going to look around the rug and I'm going to see who's sitting really quiet, ready to go to the tables. And then I'll look around and I pick who I want to pick tell them to go to the red table. Then I pick other kids to go to the blue table. We're usually gonna have about three kids, two or three kids typically at each table. So you just decide usually how to separate them. They're not assigned groups. It sometimes will get used to knowing that certain kids should not be together or certain kids work better together. Like if they're sometimes really shy and things like that. But that would be one way and that would just take a minute to go through and, and find who's sitting quietly encourage that positive behavior and tell them which table they go to. You could do something again with our cookie jar. So you could have their names written and put in the cookie jar and draw their name out. And when their name's drawn, they get to go to whatever color table you tell them to go to. Um, you could use little plastic Easter eggs and put their names in the Easter eggs. You could play I spy and say like, I spy someone wearing a purple bow in their hair then that person goes to the table. So just find a little fun type of a way to transition from creative movement into the next activity at the tables. Um, and I'll probably show you in class some more examples of that. Another thing you can do that's really fun is using different puppets. It could be something you made like a paper sack puppet, or we do have some actual little puppets in the preschool. And then the puppet can look and see who's sitting quiet and go, you know, like touch their head or something like that. Sometimes we'll play Duck, Duck, Goose as kind of the end of creative movement and the people who get picked, then instead of running around the circle, we'll just go to the table. So those are some ideas for creative movement. The last category is shapes and colors. Shapes and colors is just like it sounds. You're, they're assigned like square and blue for the day. And so your activity needs to somehow relate to that shape and that color. When you are searching for activities for shapes and colors, don't put in preschool square blue activities because it's not gonna really bring up a lot when you include both the color and the shape. I usually just start out and say preschool square craft activities. And then it brings up some fun things, um, fun craft type activities that they could do that would be fun. And I can always put blue into the activity. You can easily change it up and put the right color in. You can also include extra colors. It doesn't have to be only blue, but you do need to make sure that you emphasize blue in the activity. So examples, examples for shapes and colors. Um, again, try and fit it to the theme if you can. 
but the big overall goal is to just really emphasize the shape and the color. And it can still be with extra shapes and colors like this one around St. Patrick's Day. We did this activity. We had a little pot, black pot of gold where they had these different um, little papers in it. They would draw out one of the shapes, tell us what shape it is, a purple rectangle. And they would see if they could match it up with a rectangle or the, the color on their paper. So it could be a little game like that. It could be a craft like this one, making a lion out of all hearts. Um, this is a shape bingo game that would work. Lots of different animal types of things too, circle, lion. Octagon is a, is a shape we talk about. So that one can be a little tricky, but anything that would be circle could be turned into octagon. So this is a little turkey that's made out of the shape of an octagon and some diamonds. So you can see other shapes are included, but we're definitely reviewing and including the shape for the day. This one, when we talked about nursery rhymes, we did we talked about Humpty Dumpty, how to, or sat on a wall, had a great fall. And then they did this little puzzle to put it back together and the shape was oval and the color was white. So that went along with that. This one, they tore little pieces of paper helping those fine motor skills to make the rainbow in different colors, of course, including the color of the day. You can do lots of little shape monsters. This was a little headband that they made with hearts. This one, we used a canvas and they put these stickers on and then used watercolors and painted on it, took the stickers off and they could still see all the circles. Uh, they enjoyed that type of thing. Um, this one, they used circles with a balloon. So they dipped the balloon in paint and then stamped it on there as a, a caterpillar. So that there's all kinds of ways that you can do activities that would teach about the shape and the color. This one, we talked about sports and the shape was circles. So they made this basketball and we used the back end of an eraser on a pencil to make the dots on the basketball. So of course you would talk about circles first and emphasize the shape and then they would do their activity. All right, so I hope that gives you a good idea of shapes and colors, creative movement, um, transitions, and art that you would be teaching in circle time. So make sure you write, or sorry, teaching in preschool. Make sure you write down two examples of each of those. Put it on your um, document that you're going to be submitting for the assignment. And if you read further down, you'll see for the assignment, you're going to find some examples online. So you're going to be searching online to find some fun art, um, creative movement and shapes and color examples that you could put a picture example on there and then just kind of explain it in your document. They should be something that we could do for preschool, so three to five year olds. And when another last thing, when you search for creative movement ideas, if you put in creative movement, it doesn't bring up what we usually are going to be needing for preschool in this class. It'll bring up some different kinds of weird things. So just do like preschool movement activities or preschool gross motor skill activities, preschool exercises or things like that, that that maybe you have to just search a little differently to find fun ideas for that. Email me if you have any trouble or send me a message on Canvas and I will be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you guys on Tuesday.